Hit the Jackpot, presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, will be heard at a new time starting tonight, just one half hour from now. Be sure to hear Hit the Jackpot immediately following this broadcast. As every American school child knows... On October 12, 1492, an Italian explorer, Christopher Columbus, discovered America. On September 27, 1947, a young Italian immigrant, Luigi Basco, rediscovered America. Christopher Columbus arrived with three vessels. Luigi Basco arrived with three dollars. When Christopher Columbus landed in America, he said, I named thee San Salvador. When Luigi Vasco landed in New York, he said, Please, give me a ticket to Chicago. (laughs) And so we invite you to Chicago's Little Italy for a new comedy, Life with Luigi. The story of an immigrant created by Cy Howard and starring J. Carol Nash. From America, Christopher Columbus described his adventures to Queen Isabella in Spain. From Chicago, Luigi Vasco describes his adventures to Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, I make a promise to write to you. So I write. In the United States, one fella keep promise to write is called promissory note. <laughs> in six months since I've been in America, my writing is already so good, words don't even have Italian accent. <laughs> I have store here in Chicago just like two other businessmen, Marshall and Field. They got the same kind of store, only better location. <laughs> Mamma Mia, how you like my new business stationery? See, on top it say, Luigi Pasco, founder and prop. Prop is short for long word, I don't know. <laughs> also, my line business, old and young antiques. Everybody here is crazy for old things. Old furniture, old lamps, all the chairs. Also, is lots of people crazy about old granddad. <laughs> Must be a fine man. <laughs> Our countryman, Pasquale, who bring me to this country and rent me store, has nice place next door. It's called Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace. Sometimes at night, when a breeze from Lake Michigan is just right, then the smell from Pasquale's Palace is reminding me of home, and I'm much lonesome for you. But in the morning when I wake up, I'm so pleasant to be an American. <laughs> but as Uncle Pietro always say, there's no rose without a little thorn. And in this case, is a very big thorn. Now I know why Pasquale bring me here. He wants I should marry his daughter, Rosa. You remember when Rosa was a nice little girl? Mamma mia, something has happened. <laughs> You know the bull Uncle Pietro has? Well, go in a pasture, look at the bull, take off the horns, that's the Rosa. <laughs> but outside the Rosa, America is fine, and there's plenty of business here. It's so good that I hire me a little 12-year-old bambino who lives with me, Jimmy O'Connor. He dusts the furniture, he washes the windows, he sweep out the store. This in America is called general manager. <laughs> to show you how good business is, only this morning he said to me... Mr. Luigi, let's face it, we're in a hole. But well, that's fine. Then why are you upset, Jimmy? What's fine about it? In America, when things is good, then you're in a groove, huh? Yeah. Hole is a bigger groove, so everything's fine. <laughs> but, but, boss, business is terrible. Take a look at the books. That tells the story. Okay. Here is one page of money going on. Here's another page. Money coming in. That's the trouble, Jimmy. Money coming in and money going out. If only she could stand still, we could grab her. <laughs> How much we got in the cash box? Two dollars and eighty-seven cents. How much I owe Pasquale for rent? Forty dollars. Is it not come out even? <laughs> That's a too bad for Pasquale. 
It's too bad for you, because if you don't pay him the rent, he's got a right to kick you out. Not in America. This is free country. There's a free speech, there's a free press. But not free rent. You gotta pay him. Oh, Jimmy, I work so hard for this place. I have all my beautiful statues. What I do? What I do? I got a suggestion, but I don't think you'll like it. Anything, Jimmy. You're a smart American boy. Anything. I'm a drowning. I'm a grabbing at straws. I'm a drowning. Okay. Mary Rosa. Okay, I drown. <laughs> but, Mr. Luigi, after all, as man to man, a fellow's got to get married sometime. If Rosa is the last woman on the face of the earth, then I'd rather marry the face of the earth. <laughs> okay, Mr. Luigi. I've got another suggestion. Anything, Jimmy. I listen to anything. Okay. Sell one of your statues. Sure, I sell. Why do you think I'm in business? Well, that's what you say, but as soon as somebody comes in to buy something, you discourage them. I don't discourage. I only say not to for sale. <laughs> Last week, we could have sold that one a General Grant. I never sell a president of the United States. <laughs> you won't even sell Robert E. Lee. He's a nice man, Mr. Lee. Poor fellow pick the wrong side, so why I sell him? <laughs> you know, you got 18 Abraham Lincoln. 19. I buy another one yesterday. <laughs> Mr. Luigi, I know how we can clear up all our debts and pay the rent. How? Just sell one statue. George Washington. George Washington? Founder and prop of our country, I never sell him. If you don't sell something, Mr. Luigi, you... Never sell this statue of Washington. I bring him with me from old country. His only copy of Horace Greeno's statue made in 1833 in Florence, Italy. If it's that good, put him in the window. It'll attract customers. Okay, Jimmy. Make you feel better. I put Washington in the window. Okay, George. Up you go in the window. Don't worry, George. I put you way in the back. They never see you. Uh, Jimmy, you just come from school. You must be hungry. You go back in the kitchen. Eat a little lunch. Okay, boss. He's a nice boy, Mr. Washington. Only he don't understand us. Don't worry. I don't sell you. When Jimmy go back to school, I take you out of the window. I put in college. <laughs> Pardon me. Are you the proprietor? I'm Luigi Basco, founder and prop. What can I do for you, lady? I'm interested in that statue. What statue? Uh, the one you have in your window. Why, why you want this statue? Well, I noticed it when I came by your shop yesterday. It's a rare statue. You really like him, huh? I certainly do. You're crazy about him, huh? Yes. Is it not for sale? <laughs> but it's in your window. Suppose you in my window. You for sale? Well, but that's... George ridiculous. Washington crossed the Delaware, 1776. But the Luigi's a window? Never. Okay, Mr. Luigi. Oh, you got a customer. That's good. The lady don't want to buy anything. Goodbye, lady. <laughs> oh, but I did want to. Never I mind want... the goodbye, lady. What's going on here? Well, I'm a representative of the Americana Society, and we're having an auction. And I was just trying to buy that statue of George Washington. Great. Shut up, Jimmy. Go back and have a dessert. <laughs> I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. So you fired it, Jimmy. I quit. Oh no, you don't. I quit. You can't. Quit. I'm the boss. I do anything I like. I quit, and you're fired. That's all. Goodbye, lady. <laughs> Why won't you sell a statue? Well, yes, you're in business. Why won't you sell this statue? Look, I got other things to sell. Here, I sell you Venus de Milo with two hands. <laughs> No, the Americana Society is only interested in historical statues. Statues? Here, lady, I give you two General MacArthur's free. <laughs> now, please, it's Washington I want. But I cannot sell the father of our country. Mr. Luigi, if you don't sell something, you won't be able to pay the rent to Pasquale. And you'll have to marry Rosa. Well, all right, I'm a stuck, I'm a stuck. Either way, you break my heart. I take George Washington in the back. I wrap him up with my own hands. Well, George, I got to sell you. What I do? What I do? If I don't sell, I don't pay the rent, I get pushed out. Well, that's all right, maybe. But then I got to marry Rosa. 
If you ever see her, George, you don't blame me. Please, George, don't look at me like that. Always since I'm a little boy, I know about you. You fine man, you rich man. You have a big farm, but when the poor people say, Hello, George, we need a general. You say, okay. You give a plantation, June 1775. Now, I give you up, it can't be helped. Lots of things we do in the wartime. Right now is Luigi Basco's war. Come on, George. Say goodbye. It's very sad for me, too, George. Shake hands, Mr. President, to Washington. I wrap you up warm so you don't freeze like in the Valley Forge winter 1777. Arrivederci, Giuseppe Washington. All right, Jimmy, put a statue in a lady's card. Okay, Mr. Luigi. Here's your hundred dollars. Thank you. And don't feel too badly, because all the proceeds from this auction go to charity. If you'd like to come, here's the address. The auction will be held in my home. Thank you, lady. Goodbye. Good day. Okay, Mr. Luigi, I put the statue in the car. Gee, she must be loaded. She drove off in a beautiful Lincoln. It's a funny country when a Washington drives away in a Lincoln. <laughs> what are you going to do with that dough? Put him under the mattress. Someday, someone will come in here and steal you and the mattress. Not in a Chicago. <laughs> take my word for it. In America, everybody puts their money in the bank. I don't take your word, Jimmy. Any time I got a problem... I go to see my teacher, Miss Spaulding. If I don't come back before you go to school, lock the door, put out the regular sign. Back soon, or maybe longer. Please don't wait. <laughs> America, I love you. You like a papa to me. I'm Hello, my teacher, Miss Spaulding. I brought you an apple. Thank you, Luigi. I'll be with you as soon as I finish talking to Mary. I wait. Now, Mary. Yes, Miss Baldy? I was very surprised this morning when you didn't know who invented the electric light. Well, I had to I'm surprised, too, at the little bambino. Everybody ought to know who invented electric light. You see, Mary, here's a man who's only been in this country for six months, and he knows. Go on, Luigi. Tell her who invented the electric light. Marconi. <laughs> Marconi, he invent everything. No, Luigi, Edison invented the electric light. Then Marconi invent Edison. <laughs> I see you need some more private lessons, Luigi. All right, Mary, you can run along now. But be sure you have better answers tomorrow. All right, Miss Baldy. Goodbye, Miss Luigi. Goodbye, little Mary. Tell me, Luigi, how are you and Jimmy O'Connor getting along? He's a fine boy. Every day we have a fight. It's very pleasant. I'm so glad he found a home and a job with you. He's a good businessman. But he make me do wrong thing today. He make me sell a statue of George Washington. He's not patriotic, huh? Luigi, patriotism isn't measured by statues. It's something you feel. Good, I feel much better. But what I do with a hundred dollars? Jimmy said put it in the bank. Well, he's right. I suggest you put your money in the Case National Bank. Why? Why a bank? Well, because in America, you don't carry on business with cash. You'll need checks. Marshall Fields. They put money in a bank? Yes. Is it good enough for me? <laughs> I go tell Pasquale I give him a check for the rent. You can see Pasquale later. Now go straight to the bank. Don't walk around with so much cash. After all, there are some dishonest people in the world. Don't worry about me. I I'm a smart man. Yes, but look out for strangers. They'll try to sell you the Union Station for a hundred dollars. Not to me, Miss Spaulding. Second day I'm in Chicago, I buy it for five dollars. <laughs> for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago... We look over Mama Basco's shoulder as she turns to page two of the letter from her son, Luigi. So, Mama Mia, six months in this country, and I'm partner with Marshall and Fields. 
But as Uncle Pietro always say, every cloud she has a silver lining. For me, it's no silver lining because I'm looking into gold teeth of our countryman, Pasquale, who's smiling at me like a cat. Louis! <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. What's the matter for you? I'm your countryman. Why are you passing my place without the coming in? Have a glass of wine. I- I'm in a hurry now. Wait a minute, Luigi, my friend. Please, are you breaking my arm? <laughs> Somebody's been asking it for you. If it's who I think it is, goodbye. <laughs> Come in, Luigi, just for a minute. I'm going to the bank, get a check, pay you the rent. Forget the business. I'm going to worry about the rent to you like a son to me. I bring you from the old country. Why? You don't know either? <laughs> Listen to me, Luigi. I bring you here to marry Rosa. Now, come inside, stupid. You call me, Papa. <laughs> Rosa, my little bambino. <laughs> Look, Luigi's here. <laughs> hello. That's in a way to say hello to bachelor man, to say hello nicer. <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> That's a nice conversation you two just had. You both are made for each other. It's a perfect combination. Okay, Rosa, go back to the kitchen and help your mama. Pop is going to take care of your future. <laughs> She's like a little angel. When I go to heaven, I look her up. <laughs> Luigi, I got a surprise for you. Next Sunday, how you like to go with me to a wedding? Who's getting married? You are. <laughs> then you will be my son. What do you say? Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> oh, Luigi, Rose is a big, but she's a wonderful girl. She's had such a nice, a comfortable lap. You sit there, read the paper, smoke a pipe, drink a wine. What do you say? I want a wife and not a poster chair. <laughs> Is this your last word, my son? Yes. Your very last word? Yes. You positive, absolutely sure? Yes. Where's my rent money? I throw you off the street. <laughs> Pasquale, I got the rent money. I go to the bank now. I give you a check. Luigi, I don't know from a check. So you here, I'm here, the money's here. Transaction. Pasquale. Pasquale, you don't understand. You're like a greenhorn. Oh, shut up. I'm here 26 years. Don't get excited. I explain to you. See? Here is $40 rent. I take. You impatient. <laughs> take them as slow. First, I take money to bank. You're going to pay my rent to the bank? No, 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 no. <laughs> Miss Spaulding, she explained to me. I explained to you. All right. I take this money to bank. You take this money to bank. They take money from me. They take this money from you. They depart. They depart. They give me checkbook. They give you checkbook. I take one check. You take one check. I write. You write. Pay to order Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace of $40 and no cents. Pay to order Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace of $40 and no cents. I bring you a check. You bring me a check. You make a big cross on the back. I make a big cross on the back. Then you go to bank. <laughs> then I go to bank. You stand on line. I stand on line. You tell the fellow you want the money. I tell the fellow I want the money. He give you $40. He give me $40. It's very simple. Everybody's happy, see? See. It's very simple. Everybody. I'm not the happy. <laughs> Money's right here on the table. Now give me. No. I tell you this once more. I take money to bank. You take money to the bank. They take money from me. They take money from you. They depart. They depart. They give me a check. They give you a check. I take one check. You take one check. I write. You write. Pay to order Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace of $40 and no cents. Pay to order Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace of $40 and no cents. I bring you a check. You bring me a check. You make a big cross on the back. I make a big cross on the back. <laughs> then you go to bank. Then I go to bank. You stand on line. I stand on the line. You tell a fellow you want the money. I tell a fellow I want the money. He give you $40. He give me $40. What's the simpler? Pay me my money. I don't want the simpler. <laughs> Wait. 
I explain you once more. <laughs> I take money to bank. Please, Luigi. I've been to the bank twice. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Give me my money. Wait. Once more, I explain. I go to the bank. You go to the bank. They take the money from me. They take the money from me. Take the box. Take the box. Excuse me. Is this Case National Bank? Yes. I'd like to talk to Mr. Case. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Case is dead. I wait. <laughs> is Mr. Case's son here? He has no son. Oh, too bad. He's got a fine building here. If he's got a daughter, I'm single. Uh, look, sir, this is a bank. Did you wish to open an account here? See. Si. Fine. Is this your first bank account? See. Si. All right. We have the necessary papers right here. Just take a few minutes. Uh, now, what did you say your name was? I don't say. Well, what is it? <laughs> what for you need my name? For, uh, for our records. Now, what is your surname? First time anybody called me sir. Thank you. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, sir... How much would you like to start with? I'd like to start with a thousand dollars. That's a good round sum. But I only got a hundred. <laughs> well, uh, just give me the money and I'll open up an account for you. You want a checking account? Yes. I have to write a check. I have to pay Pasquale the rent or I have to marry Rosa and uh, then fine, I've got to fine, go to... Fine, fine, <laughs> Now, here's your deposit slip and here's your checkbook. Now, if you'll give me the money... Is that uh, necessary? <laughs> yes. First, what do you do with this money? Why, we... We invest it. Yes, that's what we do with it. <laughs> Where you invest it? Where? Why, we... What did you say? <laughs> where you invest? Yes. Where do we invest all this money? <laughs> I ask you first. <laughs> Perhaps you'd better talk to our vice president. Mr. Thurston, would you help me here with the problem? Certainly, Parker. There's a person here who wants to open an account. Oh, Parker, I must leave in a few minutes, sir. Can't you take care of it? Sir... He wants to know what we do with our money. What? Well, that's a ridiculous question. I agree with you, sir, but what do we do with our money? <laughs> Why, uh, we invest it. But where? Where? Yes, where? Uh, go back to your cage, Parker. I'll handle this myself. Uh, how do you do, sir? My name is Mr. Thurston. I'm vice president of this bank. Ordinarily, I don't handle matters such as this, but uh, I've always had a slogan. The small depositor of today is the big depositor of tomorrow. Then I come back tomorrow. <laughs> no, 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 I, I don't mean it that way. Now, sir, you want to know what we do with our money. C is important. Is first hundred dollars I ever had. Yes, I understand your feelings. Uh, this is what we do with your hundred dollars. We buy railroads, telephone companies, light and power, public utilities, streetcars, real estate, and government bonds. Satisfying? Seems like a lot to put a hundred dollars. <laughs> well, uh, let me try another approach. Uh, what business are you in? Antique business. All right. Now, a lot of times you can sell an antique for a high price and buy back the same antique at an auction at a cheaper price. That means your money is working for you. Now, if you give your money to us... That's good for you, but bad for me. I'm not going to put the money in the bank. I got other ideas of what to do. Now, just a minute, sir. How dare you question my business sense? For your information, I have been with the Case National Bank for ten years. Before that, I was with the Third National Bank for five years. Before that, I was with the Second National Bank for three years. Before that, I was with the First National Bank for two years. That is my professional record. 
What do you say to that? Is it too bad you couldn't haul a job? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next item for auction is this statue of George Washington, which came... From Luigi Pasco's window, 21 North Horstead Street, open night and day. Oh. Hello, Mr. Vasco. We're just auctioning off your George Washington. What is as many as I come? Yes, well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's start the bidding. Who say three hundred dollars? Holy smokes, did this lady only pay a hundred? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, <clears throat> who say two? Oh, come, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, this is George Washington. He's been elected. He's not campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> Ball rolling. $25. $25 is insult. Well, I think Mr. Basco's right. Can't I hear $50 for the father of our country? You'll bet your life, a lady. I, Luigi Basco, bid a $50. All right, I have $50. Who'll bid more? I, Luigi Basco, bid a $75. <laughs> uh, I have a $75 bid. Who'll say $100? I, Luigi Basco, say $100. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you're bidding against yourself. I know, that's the idea. You want the more money, I bid the more money. But, Mr. Basco, your original bid of $50 is enough for this statue of George Washington. Is not enough for father of our country. Even $100 is not enough. I bid everything I got. The $102.87. Mr. Basco, you're a real American. Uh, not yet. You see, I only come here September 1947, so I don't get the first papers yes, until fine, I go down fine. to see the button. Yes, I, I understand. Uh, Mr. Basco, thank you for your bid, but it's a great personal sacrifice. So what? So Pasquale threw me out in the street. It's all right with me. So I stay out in the street with George Washington. He's worth it. He's a great man. Brave man. Brave like a Garibaldi. Is a braver, maybe. He beat the whole of the British Army. So people make him first the president. Twice. 1789 and 1793. Maybe you don't know how great the man he is. Because you're born here and you're used to him like a, like a children to Papa. Maybe it's why you don't know how much it's worth to have a George Washington in your house. But to me, I know. When I have him in my store, every morning I say... Good morning, Mr. President. And every night I say, sleep good, Mr. President. Find the country, America. That's the way I, Luigi Basco, bid a one hundred two dollars and eighty-seven cents. Thank you, Mr. Basco. And the bid is one hundred and two dollars and eighty-seven cents. Going once, going twice. One thousand dollars. $1,000 bid by Mr. Thurston of the Case National Bank. $1,000. Are there any other bids? Mrs. Wells, uh, I, I got no money now. I work harder next year. Maybe you take um, the little money I got. Uh, I give you the rest on an installment plan. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. We must have cash. 1000 once, twice, three times. So to Mr. Thurston. Mamma mia, my statue. Where do you want the statue delivered, Mr. Thurston? 21 North Halstead Street. Mr. Mr. Thurston, that's my address. Exactly. That's where George Washington belongs. With you. Gracias, Mr. Thurston. I pay you back. Here's the down of payment. My hundred dollars. I'll take this money and open an account for you at the bank. But the statue is yours. It's a gift. It's impossible. In America, Mr. Basco... Everything is possible. Be sure to listen next week at this time for Life with Luigi, a Cy Howard production.